Once again, it's time for Project Audio, where voice actors come together via Zoom to present classic radio with a visual twist. Oh, hello. You want to come walking with me? That's fine. My name's Larry Groby with the Generic Radio Workshop. <laughs> you know, it's a dark and stormy night. It would be an excellent way to start a ghost story, the kind of story you would tell in a dark woods. Or perhaps, perhaps the kind of story you'd tell on the radio, the kind Project Audion is producing this month, about two uh, hikers lost in the Canadian wilderness until they uh, run into the return of the werewolf. <laughs> well, that's a bit of the plot I'm giving away in the title. But then the plot of a ghost story isn't really the, the point of the ghost story. It's about how you tell it, which is why such stories were so good on the radio. Because horror shows conjured up images in your mind's eye. But you didn't need special effects to see. So there were dozens of horror shows. Famous ones like Lights Out and Inner Sanctum. Others, The Witch's Tale, The Hermit's Cave, Dark Fantasy, and so many more. Even regional networks and even local stations love these. Ours is called Midworld. It was written by a young Fort Worth woman named Virginia Wilton. And it's a lost series from 83 years ago. Midworld was broadcast on the Texas State Network on dozens of stations across Texas in 1939. So, uh, wherever you are, settle in, get comfortable, for a moment at least, <laughs> as Project Audio presents the story of two Canadian hikers who are actually lost in Midworld. The Midworld programs are of particular interest to those who enjoy tales of the uncanny, of weird happenings among mortals, as well as in the realms of fantasy. If such tales are likely to disturb your dreams, we urge you to turn your dial to milder entertainment for the next half hour. Tonight's Midworld drama, entitled Return of the Werewolf, tells of ghostly visitation and a gruesome revenge in a far Canadian wilderness. Oh. Let's say we rest a while, Pete. Going's pretty tough. Oh, that canoe sling's been sawing my shoulder in two. Say, got any idea where we are? Yeah, the guide, he tells us his portage, it leads us to Churchill River, but me, I don't know. What do you suppose it got into that fool guide this morning? Nice mess we're in. That canoe's enough of a load without having to haul these supplies, too. Yeah, we turn back, maybe. Turn back? Heck no. Because that darn Indian ducked out on us doesn't mean we can't find our way to the river. Yeah, but this portage had almost discovered with the underbrush last few miles. <laughs> it's like it is not used for years. Oh, I don't like this, George. Well, neither do I. But we're going on just the same. The river's bound to be somewhere ahead. Can't be much farther. Yeah, but have you noticed how still it is? No sound of a bird or an animal for hours. 
<laughs> it's like a place of the dead, it is. We're heading into one of those heavy spruce forests, Pete. Hmm. Sure is quiet, all right. And not a breath of air. Hmm. That's the reason. That thunder means a storm's brewing. That's why it's so quiet. Guess it'll break before nightfall. Already it is dark air. Yeah, clouds are low, that's all. Still some time left before it'll be night. We can make camp by that big boulder over yonder. Hey, what's the matter, Pete? What are you staring at? Hey, through the trees there, to our left. See? A cabin. <laughs> cabin in this wilderness. Now who makes a home in this place? Hmm. It's a cabin, all right. But unless my eyes deceive me, it's not being lived in. Oh, look, beyond the cabins, there's water. See, a, a lake. Yep, it's a lake, all right. But what lake? I thought I knew something about the layout in this territory, but wonder what lake that could be. Looks like a big one. Say. That storm's almost on us, Pete. We'd better grab our packs and make for that cabin yonder. It'll be a lot better than snuggling up alongside that boulder for the night. Oh, you don't mean you want to go in that place? Sure, why not? You can see from here nobody's living in it. And if there is, well, nobody's going to refuse a shelter during a storm. Yeah, me, I'd rather we stay around the camp at a big rock. Hey, come on, come on. It'll rain cats and dogs in a few minutes. Grab your pack and let's get to that cabin before... Well, at least we didn't get drenched in the downpour. Thought it was going to last all night, but it seems all over now. All but the wind. Guess we'll clear up by morning and we can be on our way. Uh, George, and now that it rains no more, it is better maybe we should not stay in the cabin for the night. Huh? What's the matter with staying here for the night anyway? Sure, one end of this old shack is about caved in, but there's this fireplace and we're warm enough. Uh, at least we'll be more comfortable out here than in the open. Hmm, I want there. Me, I think I know why the Indian guide, he runs away when we start in this direction this morning, George. This place, this lake out there, it is dead lake, and no Indian will come near a dead lake. And since, since... What is this? What is all this about dead lake? If that pond out there is dead lake, well, we sure must be a long ways off our track. What's on your mind, Pete? A long time ago, when I am a child, before I come to your Chicago and meet you at the school, my people, they live in this Canada. And... Yeah, 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 I know all about that. But what's that got to do with now? And ever since we find this cabin, I try to remember something I hear when I am a little boy. A story about such a place as this. Now it comes back to me a little. I think this is a place where, where it happened. I don't get it, Pete. Where, where what happened? Yes, it comes back to me. The story about the cabin of Pierre Dubois that he builds on the edge of Dead Lake so far from the trading post. This place, well, he kills hell. Hey, wait a minute. Where who killed who? What's all this about anyway? Yes, this is that cabin for sure. You know, something tells me before the storm, you and I, we should not come in here. See here, Pete. What's come over you? You're white as a sheet. George, this place is... is... George, you feel something? I feel sleep. Be. If we're going to find our way to Churchill River in the morning, it'd be a good idea if we unpacked our rolls and caught a bit of shut-eye. 
George, that sound. Did you hear that? Oh, it's just the wind howling, that's all. Let's throw some of that old rubbish and stuff on the fire. Well, what do you know about that? What is it, George? I could swear I saw... Oh, nothing. Fire's dying down, making funny-looking shadows. That's all. Oh, that sound again, George. It is no wind howling outside. It is in here with us. Oh, nuts. Next thing I know, you'll be seeing spooks. Where's the tobacco? We'll have a smoke before. Oh, something. Touch me. I feel something. At my throat, I tell you, there is something. Pete, Pete, quick, gra- grab your gun. It's it's moving. Whatever it is, it's, it's, it's coming this way. Look out, Pete. Look out. Pete. Pete, old man, are you all right? What? What happened? On my head, my throat, it feels so funny. Gosh. Well, for a moment, you were, uh... Well, I guess you hit your head on that rock by the fireplace when you fell. I, I fell, but I don't know how. how. Guess we, we both got the jitters, Pete. Well, we sort of imagined something was after us, remember? Oh, yes, yes, I remember now. You tell me to get my gun, but me, I... Cannot raise my arm. Then something, something seems to suffocate me. Something has my throat. Here, here, have a drink from my flask, Pete. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <sighs> Thanks, I feel better now. Oh, what, what happened, George? We heard something. Um. Nothing, I guess. Just the wind, like I said. Our imaginations just got the best of us, that's all. Oh, no, but something touched me, George. I feel it. Something heavy. Something cold and clammy like a dead thing. It it seemed to drag me down, choking me and tearing at my throat. Well, I got a hold of your gun. Took a shot at whatever it was. But it must have been just imagination, Pete. I just took a shot into thin air. <laughs> and when you hit the floor like that, well, I uh, I thought I'd shot you. Wow. You gave me quite a turn. But something struck me down. I know something was here. Well, everything's quiet as a tomb now. Even the wind has died down. We're just jumpy, that's all. All we heard was just the wind. And if there was anything more, surely we'd have seen it. In this Canadian wilderness, many strange things may happen that one cannot see with the eyes. Like that story I started to tell you a while ago about Pierre Dubois. Yeah. What about that yarn, Pete? I don't suppose either of us will get any sleep tonight anyhow. You may as well finish the tale. (sighs) Ah. Elphus, we put some more wood on the fire. Uh, he gets cold in here. Uh, there, in the kelner, I'll buy some stuff for the fire. Yeah, looks like some old broken up furniture. I'll go yank something out of that pile. Hey, hey, Pete, come here with that flashlight. Can't make out what this thing is exactly. What you find, George? Here, here, here's the flash. Well, I'll be. Here, Pete, take a look at this. Oh, it is a human skull. Oh, now, now I am sure this is the cabin of Pierre Dubois. Now I know we are not just imagining something. It was here a while ago. But, well, just because we find this, uh, this skull here under this pile of junk... Hey, Pete, you're shaking all over. What the devil's the matter with you? It is her school. The bride of Pierre de Bois. In this cabin for true, just like they tell. Say, all this doesn't make sense, Pete. Just let me... No, 
No, no, no, don't touch it. Put the skull back under the boards like you find it. All right, come back to the fireplace and I tell you. Pierre Dubois, he brings his young bride here to this cabin he builds by dead lake. He kills her after a while, there by the fireplace. And when the men from the trading post they come, they find nothing but bloodstains on the floor. Mm, messy sort of guy, wasn't he? Did they ever find her body? Yes, they find her body. It comes up from the lake out there, but there is no head on it. Oh, he brags about this, this, this Pierre, how he cuts off his young, beautiful wife, then throws her body in the lake. So he bragged about it, did he? How do you ever get away with that? First, I tell you about, about the Indians. They say she comes back to this cabin all these years to look for, for her head. That is why nobody ever comes near this place. That is why the Indian guy that we have, he runs away this morning. He knows. That is why I tell you we should not stay in this cabin, George. Bosh! You can't scare me with that sort of ghost story, Pete. <laughs> I suppose you believe it was her in here a while ago. But dead women can't run around looking for heads, old man. That's sheer nonsense. Oh, you laugh. You laugh, all right. But these Indians, I tell you about, say a reason never to come near this cabin. <laughs> all right, Pete. All right, have it your way. But I'm not letting any ghost scare me out of a warm place on a cold night. Oh. There. Now let's hear the rest of that yarn. You say this Pierre guy, he killed, he killed his wife, cut off her head, threw her body in the lake. So now then, what did they do to him? You say he bragged about it at the trading post. Didn't they get him? String him up? After all, when a man murders his wife, even in the Canadian wilderness... Oh, never can they do anything about it. He just laugh at the... Then he just disappear, poof, like that. Almost why they are talking to him. They say, they say he turns himself into a loup-garou. A loup What in thunders a loup-garou? Yeah, oh, Georges, you have heard of werewolves, maybe? Oh, you mean those, uh... Half animal things or something? Of course. I read about such things in stories of the Dark Ages, but, well, what is the connection between werewolves and your whatever it is? They are one and the same. European history books, they tell us a werewolf, but here in Canada, the old French traders and trappers, they give him the name of Lou Garou. <laughs> oh, all the crazy. Look here, Pete. Don't you tell me you actually believe in that foolishness. Well, uh, not exactly, but I know this Pierre Dubois is still here. Near the dead lake somewhere. Like I say they never find him for his wife's murder. Because. Well, because. <sighs> because what? Because he is a Lugaru, and so they stay away. The story goes that he cannot change back into a man. He can't change? Say, so are you trying to kid me? Of course, you are American. People do not believe, but according to the writings of the men who know about such things, after a certain length of time, when a man too often makes a change from animal form to that of an animal from human, the power to return is lost. And he must remain a werewolf, a loup-garou, until, until... Well, 
Until what? Only in death, by the hand of a human being, can he become a man again. And now you know the story of Pierre Dubois, how he kills his bride here in this old cabin many years ago. How he cuts off her head and throws her body into the lake out there, in Dead Lake. And how the Indians tell that always she comes back here to look for her poor head. Oh, cut it out, Pete. You're getting morbid. Just because we found that old skull over there in the corner, how do we know it's her skull anyway? Say, the wind's rising again. Thought that storm was over. Hope it didn't rain anymore. Almost, it seems to me. I can hear her voice in that wind. The voice of that poor dead girl. It's like she's crying. Goodness sakes, Pete. It's not like you to take on this way. Here's a shelter in this old cabin on a cold night. And you're trying to tell me this place is haunted? And so it is, George, just like the Indians. Oh, darn the Indians. If you want to pay attention to all their silly superstitions... And that is why our guide, he runs away this morning near the last trading post. He knows we go in the direction of Dead Lake. He knows the story of this cabin and Pierre. Pipe down, will you? What do we care about that old wives' tale? We got off in the wrong direction, the wrong trail, and wind up here for the night, and that's all. But it'll soon be daylight, and we can be on our way. Oh, that sound again, George. You hear? Oh, it's just the wind. Just like it was before. Tis her spirit of that poor dead girl who looks for her head. Now, don't start that again. Snap out of it. Oh, there it is again. It comes closer. Already I seem to feel that cold, clammy weight pressing down on me. Oh, come now, Pete. Relax. we both got the flashlights on. The fire's bright. If there is anything around here that... Uh, whoa! Oh! Oh, what is it? What is the oh, matter, George? Oh. For why you jump like that? Oh, it's nothing. I thought I felt something on the back of my neck. Just a cold draft, that's all. Oh, I tell you, I tell you that sound. It means something. But we can't see anything, Pete. There, there can't be. Oh, oh, I say, I believe you're right. I can sort of feel something myself right up, right up close. Oh, something horrible. It's sing. It's here. Pete, something's got hold of me. Hey! No, 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 no. It can't be. Hold still, George. Hey, let me. Oh, you roll about so, George. What is the matter with you? I can't move anything. Something holding me down. Trying to get it back. My throat, my, my throat. Oh, oh Pete, help me! Oh. Pete, I'm afraid my arm is broken. Oh, it was horrible. You rolling around there on the floor, fighting with something we cannot see. There is nothing I can do. Oh, my old body feels like like it's been crushed into a pulp. Oh, George, if we ever get out of here, away from here, alive. We'll get out all right, Pete. Take it easy, old man. <laughs> But the awful thing that was here, it, it will come again. I, I never believed in 
ghosts in all my life, but something had hold of me, and it wasn't anything human. Hey, listen. It's from outside. Yeah. Timber wolves. Sounds like a big pack. We don't dare leave this cabin now. Ghost or no ghost, those devils would tear us from limb from limb. But he's saying it will come again. I know. I'd rather tussle with a spook than having that howling pack out there. If only my arm wasn't broken. Eh, hey, George, it, it, through this hole in the wall, I, I, I see the, the moon. It shines now. Wolves out there in the clearing, they go towards the lake. Toward the lake? One of them, he leaves the pack. I never have I seen a wolf so big. You say one of them left the pack? Oh, that's, that's funny. Yes. Is the one he comes this way towards the cabin here? The others, they do not follow. You better keep your gun trained on him, beat. Those devils get our scent? Well, it'll be just too bad. One end of this cabin's pretty badly caved in, you know. This one, he he stops and he looks this way. I see moonlight, I, I see him, he raises his head. Now he moves away, but he does not follow the others. The one there. Well, if they're moving on, I guess we'll... Oh, God found this broken arm. Morning. It's here again. You hear? Yeah. Yes, I hear it all right. Hang on to your gun, Pete. Let's keep close to the fire. It was when I rolled towards the fire a while ago that, yeah, whatever it was, let me go. Don't hear those wolves anymore. Guess they must be stalking some animal. I see them go towards the lake, and then they move on. All but this one that stops. I wonder. Oh, huh. what are you wondering? What was that? If only my arm didn't... Oh. There! You hear that? It's like someone walking. Someone walking? You know, there's no one here but us. Nothing that warns us with footsteps, anyway. George, this time... The same thing that lives. What is here now is not a... There's something moving there in the dark where the cabin wall caves in. See? Move closer to the fire, Pete. Be quiet. Careful, Pete. Careful. There's no ghost this time. Funny how he can wiggle his way in here. Oh, it is not funny, George. Remember what I say about the... Look at him, Pete. He's watching us. Careful. Hold your gun ready. Whew, I never saw a wolf that big. George, that is no timber wolf. That is... He's coming this way. Shoot, man. Shoot. <gasps> Give me that gun. What have you done? Oh, what have you done, George? That was no timber wolf. Look, look, watch him. Uh, that that thing. What is it? Good Lord, am I am I going crazy? It, it can't be. Pete, what is it? Oh. Oh. Tell you, George, that thing on the floor, it is Pierre Dubois. Like I tell you, it burns well, Wolf, and only in death by the hand of a man can he return to his human shape again. But this, this is ghastly, horrible. Pete, I've killed him. I've killed a man. Oh, I've done murder. Murder! <laughs> oh, no, George, you did not kill a man. You shot a wild beast. A beast that returns to its former shape. 
now that it is dead. Orduna looks at Wayshores, you have saved a soul that has long been lost, and now... But, but, oh, can such a thing be? A wolf came in here. I shot him, and now, now, oh, Pete, that thing can't be a human being, and yet it looks like a man. And so it is. It is Pierre Dubois. That was so long a werewolf, one of a pack of wild animals, but still with, with the soul of a man. It looks like a man, a big man with an awful wild face and staring dead eyes, dead eyes looking up at me, and I killed him. No, don't, don't, George. This as is as it should be. Was that sound that we hear before? Let's get close to that fire, Pete. It's coming nearer. No, it's not coming near us. Seems like the sound's over there where the body is. George, that dead girl who looks for her head, his wife that he killed so long ago. Maybe she goes to him now that he is here where she can find him. Oh, I know it is, George. Look! Look at that dead thing over there! It moves! The creature you shot, it moves! See? It's a head! <gasps> oh, something's got a hold of it, Pete! Something is mauling the head of that dead thing there on the floor! Oh, Pete! <gasps> Look! Look at that! Look! Oh. Pete, am I going crazy? You see what I see? As the head is being torn from his body. Oh, George, that thing that's been coming here, it was looking for him. And now she says she comes for his head. Steady, Pete, steady. Watch. It's like the Indians say she comes back looking for her head all these years. He is not here. Because he is a werewolf, but now he lies there, and and she tears his head from him. It is her revenge. Now she has her revenge. Oh, look there, it moves away towards the place where the world caves in. Look, the head, the head of the werewolf. Pete, we're, we're going mad. Such things... Cannot be. Yes, the head, it floats along in the air, draining blood. Look at the blood of the werewolf. Horrible, horrible, I can't stand it. She carried his head away. Tis hell, revenge. Hell, revenge. Revenge. have been listening to Return of the Werewolf, the ninth in a series of Midworld programs, coming to you from our Fort Worth studios. Your announcer, Tim Hudson. This is the Texas State Network. Thanks for watching this episode of Project Audion. And if you only heard this episode, then head to the projectaudion.com website so you can see it in action. All our past episodes are online as well. And you can be notified about future episodes by adding your name to our mailing list. So until next time, thanks for listening. Am I going crazy, or, or do you see what I see? I, oh, the head of celery. It is being <laughs> torn from his body. <laughs> George, that thing has been coming here. It was looking for him. And now, oh, it is her. She comes for his celery. 
Head. No, head of lettuce. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Let us along. Daddy. What's uh, the produce? Uh, like the Indians say. <laughs> she comes back looking for her head. All these years he is not here.